I do not generally do TBR videos and the reason is because I do have my own personal TBR list, you know, that I write down on my notepad and now that I have a reading journal, I document it in my reading journal, but I do not like to publish it. And the reason is because most of the times I start out with a list, but at the end of the month, when I look back, I feel that I have strayed a lot, you know, because I'm a bit of a mood reader. So if I come across a book that has been, you know, highly recommended by a booktuber or a bookstagrammer, what I tend to do is I pick up the book and I read it and then I have to completely reshuffle my TBR. In the beginning of this year, in 2022, I decided that I should be more stricter and disciplined uh, in terms of maintaining a reading regime, like in terms of my TBR. Let's see how that goes. But in terms of booktube videos, I thought that rather than sharing my TBR in the beginning of the month, which everybody would forget, what would make more sense would be to do a comparison between my TBR and what I actually ended up reading. So that would be interesting, I thought. So this video is a TBR versus wrap up. My name is Angela. I'm your own bookaholic brownie. You can call me Angie. And in this channel, I talk about books, books that I have read, books that I'm reading, books that I'm planning to read. So if you're a bookaholic like me, please do not hesitate from subscribing to my channel. Also, please like, share and comment because I love to engage with you guys. So let's roll the intro and get into the video. to be realistic when it comes to my TBR list so I decided that I will choose four or five books in the beginning of the month if it is you know more fantasy laden because fantasy books tend to be you know long and sprawling of course uh, out of the four books three books that I chose were fantasy books and one was non-fiction so I definitely stuck to four books because that sounded reasonable. The four books that I chose for January were The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is book number one in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and Brain by David Eagleman. That's a non-fiction book that I read in January. So these were the four books. How did I fare? Did I read The Blade Itself? Of course I did. This is my first ever Joe Abercrombie book. It is the first book in the First Note trilogy and it is Joe Abercrombie's first book as well. It's his debut and for a debut novel, he has done incredibly well. Now, I did immersion reading for this book. So immersion reading is basically I'm reading and I'm listening to the audiobook simultaneously. And the narrator, Stephen Casey, is my new favorite audiobook narrator. What an excellent job he has done. He is amazing, especially when he, there is this character called Glockta, Sandan Glockta. When he is narrating his part, it's the best ever. I, uh, I listen to it in Storytel. Storytel is an, uh, an audiobook app, just like Audible and uh, Scribd. The Blade itself is definitely a grimdark fantasy. We come across four main characters. The first one is Logan Nine Fingers. He's also called the Bloody Nine because he is missing one finger and also he is called Bloody Nine because he is an extremely violent barbarian, you may call him. He is vicious, he is violent, he is heartless and ruthless and that's uh, one of our main character Logan Nine Fingers. And the second character that we come across is a nobleman, an extremely spoiled and self-obsessed nobleman whose name is Jazal Dan Luthor. And the third character is my favorite character which is Inquisitor Sandan Glockta. Now Glockta was a soldier or a military person of some kind and uh, he was injured during warfare and now he's crippled and he is rendering his service as an Inquisitor slash torturer for the crown, for the empire, for the king. And uh, he is very good at his job which is torturing. So that gives an idea of how he is. But he's a very ex excellent uh, character. And the fourth character, and I think the most important character among all these, is uh, Bayaz. He is a wizard and he claims to be the first of the Magi. The first of the Magi is kind of a legendary mythical figure from this land where the story is happening. And he claims to be the legendary first of the Magi himself. Nobody believes him. We will get to see whether he is what he claims to be or not. But basically, all these four come together and that's what we see and that's what happens in book number one. And I'm generally a plot-driven person. I love plot-driven story and uh, 
this book is definitely not plot driven it is character driven and i'm loving it and i'm surprised myself that you know i'm loving it so much uh, even though it's so character driven so i think joanna would like this a lot because she is such a character driven uh, reader so that was book number 1 which i read in january the blade itself by joe and kami second book in the list did i read it or not i did for sure and that is the assassin's apprentice by robin hop which is book number 1 in the farsi year trilogy and i know that this trilogy itself is part of a bigger series which is called the realm of the elderling series which is like around 14 15 books or something 18 i don't know exact number but it's a huge long as series and uh, what a journey i am glad i started this journey and i'm not complaining this book is a definitely coming of age story the story is about a royal bastard uh, called fitz who we follow along he is being uh, trained to become a spy and an assassin for the crown or for the king because this is such a long as series <laughs> and because this is just book number 1 and it shows the you know growth of this person from childhood to adolescence uh, it's definitely slow paced i know that a lot of people complain about it but i didn't feel bored because it's written that well and it is not that big or chunky a book it was around I don't know, 300 pages or something. So that was not that big a book for me to read. So I would give this a solid four. It was definitely not a five. It's four. It's building up uh, to be a five. I think I've always wondered why people talk about fits in a way they do, like with so much emotion and a lot of shedding of tears. So now I understand that after just reading book number one, I know that it gets worse. when we progress through the series but i am interested to see how his journey turns out to be that was the assassin's apprentice book number 2 which i read book number 3 the fellowship of the ring first book in the lord of the rings trilogy did i read it i did did i finish it i did not <laughs> i'm halfway through the book actually and uh, The initial plan was that I will follow along with the read along uh, that's going on in Book Discord and uh, read one book per month uh, like Jan, Feb, March. But um, somehow I was not able to pick up pace with this. Uh, I felt that the first two hundred pages were kind of really dragging. It read like a history textbook, you know, the school textbooks that we have, rather than a novel. And I felt kind of bored. It the writing was kind of dry. but again i know i'm talking about the lord of the rings which is the grandfather of all fantasy and i know people might hate me for saying this but definitely to one first 200 pages were so much of um, just just plain dry writing of history of a place that's what it felt like and also oh my god the description of the landscapes tolkien oh my god we understand you love the shire you love the middle earth but the amount of descriptions that tolkien goes on and on and on about the landscapes the forests the mountains the rivers the waterfalls and oh my god i was at the point just skipping over paragraphs because you know page after page of just just landscape descriptions that's all happened for like out of 250 pages were about this but but there is a but after that the story really picked up and uh, around 250 pages i decided that you know i will stop at 250 and then i continue in february so i stopped when it actually started getting interesting and i'm sure it is definitely an epic journey and a big story and i am eager to get into it so let's see how it goes in february and i will come back to you with a review and uh, please don't beat me up if i don't like it <laughs> So that was Lord of the Rings: The Fellowship of the Ring by J. R. R. Tolkien. Non-fiction read of the month: Brain. Did I read it? Yes, I did. Brain by David Eagleman uh, is basically a book about neuroscience. Questions like, can you imagine seeing through your tongue or listening through your eyes is it possible so these are not just hypothetical theoretical thought experiments but actual scientific experiments that are kind of you know proven and we know that it can be done it is possible it is not a whim or a fantasy and it is fantastical 
questions like this that, that are examined in this book. If you are a person who have read a lot about neuroscience, who knows the uh, law, you know, the latest advancement in neuroscience, then this book might feel kind of very basic because that's what it is. It is meant for people with no background of neuroscience. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts related to neuroscience and reading books related to neuroscience or essays, etc. or articles related to neuroscience. So for me, many of the topics that were discussed there did not seem new or novel. But if you keep that aside, if you are a person who have no knowledge about neuroscience at all, and are interested in this, please pick this book up because it is an excellent foundational kind of a book uh, if you're interested in neuroscience. My rating system is very subjective and it's definitely based on my experience uh, because for me around 20 to 25 percent of the content in the book was not new or things that I already knew didn't feel that impactful. I can definitely see a novice falling for this book and completely enamored by the concepts explained in this book i would rate it 3.5 if i was a novice i would have rated it 5 and i'm definitely going to read the next book from him which is live wired i already have it that is going to be about neuroplasticity and that is another subject that i'm quite interested in those were the four books that i read but i did not stop there i read five more thrillers i would recommend all of them to anybody it was such an interesting uh reading month when it comes to mystery thrillers for me the first book is my first ever frederick bachman book which is anxious people now this is this, this, this was such a delightful funny read i was laughing out loud so many times so there is a bank robbery which is happening it is happening in stockholm sweden the bank robbery is botched and the bank robber panics and runs into a nearby building. Now in the building, the only open door is to an apartment. And guess what is happening in that apartment? An apartment viewing. So it is filled with prospective buyers. And all these buyers are now being uh, held hostage by this bank robber. And it, uh, the building is now surrounded by cops as well. We go back and forth between this situation of the actual hostage situation and uh, the questioning by the cops of the prospective buyers. We switch between these two scenarios. It's kind of reminded me of Inside Man, the movie Inside Man. <laughs> Such a delightful, funny, easy, quick read, guys. Go and check it out. That is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Next thriller that I read was before she knew him by Peter Swanson. I had read uh, Peter Swanson's book before and I have absolutely loved them. So I went in with high expectations and I definitely was not disappointed. So the story follows um, the life of Henrietta and her husband Lloyd. They just recently moved into a new home just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, she is an illustrator and an artist. She has a studio uh, nearby where she works from. And uh, she also has bipolar disorder. She's been suffering a lot in the past. And uh, right now she has found the right meds for herself. And now she is kind of finding balance in her life and peace of mind in her life. And that all shatters when they go into a casual visit uh, to a neighbor's house. They're invited because, you know, friendly neighborhood uh, dinner. And during the dinner, they are given a home tour of the neighbors. During the home tour, she comes across an object of interest, which is kind of a sports trophy, which she is very almost like 99% sure that belong to a person who was murdered two years ago. And a case which she was very interested in for reasons unknown or reasons which is not revealed yet. So she doubts that her neighbor, the husband, it's actually a couple and the husband is definitely a killer. He's the one who killed that person and she believes that strongly. Now is this really the truth or she is overreaching, she is imagining or she because of her you know, uh, mental issues, we don't know. You will find it out why the story unfolds. So go and check it out. This was, uh, let's say, a 
3.5 read for me. Oh, and I didn't uh, rate Anxious People. Anxious People definitely a four star for me. Next book that I read was The Last Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine. I'd never read a book by her before, but am I glad I picked it up? <laughs> this is a very twisted tale. So basically, there is this woman called Amber Patterson. She is a con artist. She is a very selfish person. She's self-obsessed. She is very negatively ambitious. That that's what I would call, like to call her. That she wants to be rich at any cost, at anybody's cost. She comes across this couple who are uber rich, like you know millionaires, and she tries to con them. So the woman in the couple is the Daphne Parish. Uh, she is a you know homemaker, a philanthropist, a socialized and completely oblivious according to Amber to her good luck and good fortune and uh, the uh, easy life and amazing life that she is leading completely uh, nonchalant about it and Amber is pissed about that and uh, the husband is Jackson Parrish he is a real estate mogul basically and her plan is to somehow insert herself in their life and seduce Mr. Jackson and kick Mrs. Farish out and for herself to become Mrs. Farish. And uh, the first of the story is from the perspective, from the POV of Amber. And uh, the second half is something that you have to read for yourself. <laughs> oh my God, so many things happen in the second half completely unexpected. I love good twists and turns in my mystery thrillers and this delivered that and then for that reason I will give this four star. After the amazing debut of Liv Constantine, at least for me, I definitely wanted to read something else from Liv Constantine. I picked up another book by her which is The Last Time I Saw You. So there is a brutal high society murder. Dr. Kate English's mother Lily English has been brutally murdered during the uh, funeral and the subsequent mourning period of her mother. She is reunited with her estranged childhood best friend Blair Barrington. Kate starts receiving very mysterious dangerous threats, murder threats basically. Incidentally Blair Barrington she is a mystery novel writer. Blair uh, decides that she has to do her own investigation in parallel to the police investigation because she has experience in working along with police in you know mystery and murder cases. So she starts her own investigation and she realizes that this town and the people in this town are not what they seem to be and there are a lot of mysteries that needs to be unraveled and to find out the ultimate truth behind the murder of Lily English you need to check out the book which is The Last Time I Saw You by Liv Constantine. If this was an okay read for me I would just give it a, yeah, a soft three. Okay, so the last thriller that I read was The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlyle. Rose Carlyle is an Australian author and I listened to this uh, also as audiobook. Actually all the thrillers I uh, listened to as audiobooks. So the Australian accent was fun <laughs> actually because something kind of you know a different experience altogether. So that was interesting and uh, the story follows uh, two uh, sisters. They are actually twin sisters, uh, Iris and Summer. Mostly the story is told from the perspective of Iris. Now Iris is bitter, she is insecure, she is cynical and she thinks that uh, Summer is much more beautiful than her even though they are identical sisters. You know, people cannot tell them apart that identical. But still she thinks that Summer is much more beautiful. She has the inner beauty. She is nice to everybody. Everybody loves her more. This is what she thinks and we know this because the story is told from her POV. But all of a sudden she is asked to fly down to Thailand where her sister Summer and Adam, uh, her husband is uh, to help them out because their child has fallen uh, sick and uh, they are stuck in Thailand but uh, they cannot keep their family yacht uh, in, in Thailand for long. It needs to be taken to Seychelles. This is an excellent sailor so Summer asks if she can fly down to Thailand and help them out. Once she reaches there she realizes that Iris is also joining her and uh, that is interesting. But unfortunately what happens is during the journey, during this voyage, <laughs> Summer falls aboard 
story takes a weird turn from there. When she reaches Seychelles, Adam mistakes uh, her for Summer and Iris doesn't correct him and she plays along. She becomes his wife essentially because she never corrects anybody around her saying that you know she is not Summer, that she is Iris and she plays along. Honestly speaking, Till the end of the book, almost till the end of the book, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a very good read. I know what's going to happen. It's very predictable. It was a three-star read for me, literally, like literally till the last paragraph. And the last paragraph elevated this from three to four for me. I was like, what? I was like so taken aback. So to find out what the twist was, read The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Line. That was my January reading month, guys. Stevia versus wrap up. How was that? Not bad, huh? I'm quite happy how January turned out to be, and I'm hoping all the rest of the month of this year are going to be as brilliant and better, even. I will definitely put up a review of the nonfiction read of the month, which was brained by David Eagleman. So watch out for that. And to do that, please do subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you get notified when I put the video out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share and comment. And until next time, this is Angie signing off. Bye-bye.